his own time. He's teaching us it's not the color of the physical body that makes a man a devil. God don't look at our colors. Minds, hearts have no color. God look at our minds and our actions and our deeds. Any Muslim who makes the pilgrimage to Mecca during the official Hajj season. One thing that I found in all of my travels was that uh, all of the Africans, not only the Africans, but the Asians and the Muslims, look upon us as their long lost brothers. And America had actually tricked many of them uh, into uh, a hands off policy it's by young, giving them the impression that leadership she was and it's the trying summit to do something and to have to you here is truly uh, my privilege. I decided to stay, which lasted eight days. And I thought it was a great opportunity to apply My for it. My argument over there was designed to prove that it is impossible for the United States government to solve the race problem. It's impossible. For the United States government to solve the race problem. It's impossible. Puzzled by Donald J. Trump. But if your truth represents white supremacy, if your truth represents colonialization, if your truth represents the death of my people. One month before he was killed, what do you think is responsible for race prejudice in the U.S.? And Malcolm said, ignorance and greed. And a skillfully designed program of miseducation that goes right along with the American system of exploitation and oppression. So it takes education to eliminate it. And just because you have colleges and universities does not mean you have education. The colleges and universities in the American educational system are skillfully used to miseducate. Throughout my travels in the Muslim world, I have met, talked to, and even eaten with people who in America would have been considered white. But the white attitude was removed from their minds by the religion of Islam. And it's helped me to, you know, to, to respect all people more, all human beings, and that God's message is universal and that it should go to everybody. I met one Sudanese sister, spoke in broken sentences and a lot of hand language. But I came to find out that she had three children and two of them have died. And we shared in that. And we sat and we cried together, even though we couldn't really communicate that well. Our hearts were together. And then after that, we shared in the worship of our Creator together, and we have a common prayer and a common language in that worship. And I just think that, you know, SubhanAllah, like Allah is so wise. God is so wise. <laughs> Elijah Muhammad taught was good for the time. Muhammad is on time. He's teaching us it's not the color of the physical body that makes a man a devil. God don't look at our colors. Minds, hearts have no color. God look at our minds and our actions and our deeds. So we have white Muslims, brown Muslims, red Muslims, yellow Muslims, all colors. So it's the color. So the big thing in the change now, we have white people who have accepted our faith and we now recognize all men as brothers and we look at them according to their works. Some blacks can do evil and white. So it's not the color. Now we look at the actions. Despite a spirit of unity and brotherhood that my experiences in America had led me to believe never could exist between the white and non-white. America needs to understand Islam because this is the one religion that erases from its society the race problem. Initial attractions to Islam were, were uh, for instance, the, the sense of, of the brotherhood of humanity. You know, of course, in the United States, we have a long tradition of the kind of racial separation and segregation, uh, which nowadays is kind of for a number of reasons. But uh, I find that uh, that when I met Muslims and later when I traveled to the Muslim world, this absolute uh, 
uh, disregard for the, the outward features of human beings, whether it be their color or, or whatnot, and that, that, that mankind is, was actually united together under a single religion. And now when I, when, I, when I read the Quran, it's not the same eyes that I read 25 years ago. It's, it's this endless sea of meaning, this answer for, for everything. And this really amazes me and keeps my, I guess, my... Never have I witnessed such sincere hospitality and overwhelming spirit of true brotherhood as is practiced by people of all colors and races here in this ancient holy land, the home of Abraham, Muhammad, and all the other prophets of the Holy Scriptures. For the past week, I've been utterly speechless and cellbound by the graciousness I see displayed all around me by people of all colors. I've been blessed to visit the holy city of Mecca. I've made my seven circuits around the Kaaba, led by a young Mutawaf named Muhammad. I drank water from the well of the Zamzam. I ran seven times back and forth between the hills of Mount Al Safa and Al Marwa. I've prayed in the ancient city of Mina and I've prayed on Mount Arafat. There were tens of thousands of pilgrims from all over the world. They were of all colors, from blue white blondes to black skinned Africans. But we were all participating in the same ritual, displaying a spirit of unity and brotherhood that my experiences in America had led me to believe never could exist between the white and non-white. America needs to understand Islam because this is the one religion that erases from its society the race problem. Something that is for all human beings. Who are human beings? Banu Adam. This is a Quranic description of humanity. What does it mean? Children of Adam. You can't get rid of your family. You may not like them. You may sometimes be annoyed with them. But whatever, they're still our family. I think during this day and age, the biggest uh, misconception about Islam is that uh, Al Islam is a very aggressive. Uh, once you take the time, to really look at Al Islam for what Al Islam is. Like they, tell, they told us when we were coming up, never judge a book by its cover. And so if you get past the cover and you really start to investigate and you read and you study, study this religion or this way of life, you will find out that it is probably the most simple and beautiful way of life uh, that you can ever imagine. We worship of our Creator together, and we have a common prayer and a common language in that worship. And I just think that, you know, Subhanallah, like Allah is so wise. God is so wise. You now have direct connect. Direct connect, and you're not going to have to worry about running out of minutes or the battery going dead. Because Allah is always ready to take your du'a, your petition to Him, your prayers to Him. All you have to do is ask Him in, in your heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Kunu shuhada ala nas. Be witnesses unto mankind. Be witnesses unto mankind. Be kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas. You are the best community brought forth. We have to embody those meanings. It's just like any of the other tests of sincerity in religion. Prayer, fasting, paying charity, making pilgrimage. All of these things show some patience and, and endure this test because because truly, anything that you leave for the pleasure of Allah.
اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي ورضيت لكم الإسلام دينا This day I have perfected your religion for you and have completed my favor upon you and have chosen for you as religion Al-Islam Alhamdulillah 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 On the day of judgment after all of the believers go to the paradise there will be some that get to sit very close to Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him at his river Al-Qathir and then there will be a group of them that are denied and I want to be amongst the group that sits close to him and those are the people uh, that follow the way he spent his life and the way that his companions uh, spent their life and that's the way I want to live my life Alhamdulillah 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 When people see the truth of Islam, it can change them if they want to be guided. If they want the truth, it can change them.